Hi, hello and welcome back. Welcome back to another Onkruid video. Now that's quite the title, right? Five women offer to carry health ape babies in the interest of science. It sounds very clickbaity, but it's actually a quote from another article that I read. So this series really has a broad range, right? We're going from amazement concerning human feats of engineering in terms of the Golden Gate Bridge to this article, which just is about absolute disgust. And that disgust is targeted at a Russian scientist biologist from a while ago who tried to combine humans and apes other than the challenging aspect of this video being talking about something so rancid and crazy in an informative manner i've also put up a challenge for myself in a way that i am just recording my cam right now so for now there is literally no background or other footage at all except for this ugly face this is gonna really ask a lot of me in terms of editing i'm gonna have to think outside of the box look for free footage to use or maybe steal a couple of clips from somewhere just to make sure that the video is still entertaining but i'm gonna try my best a big thank you is of course again warranted to Colin Wright for his curiosity daily and weekly subscription services. I stumbled upon this article through his mailing service again. Now I read the 2008 article published by Stephanie Payne with my eyes wide open and my jaw almost dropped to the floor. Now as I told you it's a telling about a Russian scientist, it's a tale about his endeavors in 1926, his name is Ilya Ivanov and he tried to adapt his research into artificial insemination, which is actually a great cause to research for, for example for parents that can't get pregnant in a natural way but they still want a child. But he adapted that project into another project where he tried to combine humans and apes. So somewhere along the way he kind of took a wrong turn I think and he ended up on the wrong path. Humans and apes together, what is this, a crossover episode? All jokes aside though, this messed up project got him nicknamed, and him being Ilya Ivanov, not Mr. Peanut Butter, got him nicknamed the Red Frankenstein. Frankenstein because he was kind of creating monsters, of course, and then red because it was the color of the USSR back when it was still vibrant and alive. While it was going on, people already kind of knew what he was doing, but there was not the amount of general interest that there was 60 years later. 60 years later, a bunch of the documents got dug up again, and only then the public really started to show interest into what the hell this messed up guy was doing. At first, he took his artificial insemination research into the field of farm animals, and I mean, not really a problem with that as long as you keep it kosher, right? What he did was he tried to kind of breed the best horses, for example. He tried to crossbreed the horses with the, the fastest genes to create like a super horse. And then if he would have stopped there, if that would have been the main body of his research, that would have still been pretty cash money of him. But he didn't stop there. And that's where the co cash money in this kind of stops. Because then he starts going on the wrong path. He starts trying to combine farm animals. One of the examples is that he tried to, it's not really a farm animal now that I think about it, maybe he tried to combine animals in general, but one of the examples mentioned in the article is combining zebras with donkeys to create. Can you guess what name they gave it? Z-donks. Z-donks. You just can't make it up. Now I guess you can kind of see where this is going. If we can combine two different animal kinds and humans are in fact still kind of animals and we are very closely related to apes in terms of Darwin's theory, why not try to combine those two types of animals as well? Surprisingly, he got support from the Bolshevik government that was reigning at that time in the USSR, even though the scientific community was blatantly disregarding what he was doing. They really didn't like it. And what he did for his research was he traveled to Paris, to the Pasteur Institute, and they supported this work. They were already working with chimpanzees, shortened chimps, in the African country of Guinea. A fun fact by the way, that institute, the Pasteur Institute in Paris, is still up and running to this day. You're probably seeing a picture right now, if I do my job correctly. Now if I try to convince you that he was on the wrong path already, it gets a lot worse. Because even when he was already going on the wrong path, some, some way or another he made another poorly judged turn and this is where shit is about to get really crazy. What he did was he took out, if I read it correctly, right? Because it's just, it sounds mind-moggling. Uh, parental advisory warning, this is disgusting. He sliced out a piece of a, a vital, a lively, a very energetic monkey's testicles. So he literally took a slice out of their balls. He implanted that slice into the testicles of a male human that was a bit on the older side and not as vital and energetic anymore to see if this procedure would kind of revitalize the human. He put monkey balls inside of human balls. 
And then this is where things really, really start to take a turn for the worst. Things really get off the rails. He took human female reproductive organs implanted them inside a female chimpanzee and then inserted human sperm into that chimpanzee. If you're still watching this video, get some help. What the hell is wrong with you? But I had to sit through the article, so I wanted to share this beautiful information with you. And it's a name to remember, right? Ilya Ivanov. If they ever ask it on a quiz, right here in my old noggin. This process of making videos about these crazy kinds of things is just great for my general knowledge of random facts. I remember, for example, that the architect that made the Golden Gate Bridge is Josef Strauss, and I also remember the Halfway to Hell Club. So it's just these little snippets of the most inter interesting parts hang inside of your brain after you make a video about it and talk about it to other people. So thank you guys for listening. You're making me smarter while I'm trying to make you smarter. And of course, humanity in general is messed up. So reporters at the time were like, ew, no dude, stop, that's disgusting. What the hell are you doing, man? That's absolutely rancid. But uh, does it work though? Does it work? And I mean, in some way, shape or form, you can kind of understand their cur curiosity, right? You can kind of get a feel for it. But hell nah, brother, that's not what the Lord put us in here to do for. That shit ain't right. A logical follow-up for Ivanov after inseminating female chimpanzees in that way which was an unsuccessful procedure by the way it didn't produce any offspring luckily i might add but the logical follow-up was to do it the other way around of course to insert ape sperm into human females stop it get some help and what the article now states is that he actually found some volunteers he found some russian women they were ready to get inseminated with ape sperm and that's where the title of this video comes from, of course. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I'm not a historian, but this is still the USSR. So were they completely, completely just volunteering? I can't be sure about that, but either way. Sadly for the animals, but luckily enough for the universe and all that is right in this world, Ivanov was not that good with animals. He let all of his chimps die that he tried to bring to Russia, or I think even that he tried to bring to Paris first from Guinea. None of his chimps survived long enough for the research to actually take place. When a load of monkeys that did seem promising for his research finally arrived, he got sent to Kazakhstan because of the Great Purge in Soviet Russia, where they sent a whole bunch of scientists away because the political powers wanted to stay in power and scientists are a threat to that. Shortly after, Ivanov met the same fate as his test subjects. He also died shortly after being deported to, to Kazakhstan. So sadly, we will never know whether human-ape combinations are possible. I hope we will never know at least. What still puzzles people though, what we still don't know is why the mad lad did it. Why? 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 There's three speculations, three reasons that might be the cause for his research practices. The first one is that he wanted to prove Darwin's evolution theory by proving in some way, shape or form through his procedures that humans and apes are really, really alike because they can even procreate together. And that would, of course, kind of in some way in his sick, twisted mind be evidence for the fact that we actually stem from those monkeys. And you can be mad at him for that if that was his actual intention because it would be a very smart business move. The Russian government at the time was probably not only worried about scientists overtaking their power, but religion is of course also a major factor in stories like that. And proving evolution theory is kind of a slap in the face of religion, right? Because they believe that God created everything. So setting up research like this to disprove one of religion's major belief would have probably gathered them funding a lot more easily by the government. So he's a business man you gotta give it to him another possibility the second one is that he just wanted to continue the rejuvenation processes that he was trying to create already by slicing up the testicles and implanting them in human males to revitalize elderly soviet people with a lot of power now i must say that slicing up monkey balls and putting them inside of your own testicles is a bit less fairy tale like than looking for the eternal fountain of youth and many people also disregard this theory because they feel like well if he was already doing something as crazy as that as that revitalization then why would he set up another even crazier project to mask it it doesn't make all that much sense and then a third possible reasoning is just eugenetics 
just like Hitler did in his concentration camps in his research practices, trying to create the best humans out there and for that purpose really understanding everything there is to know about procreation and genetics and stuff like that. Ivanov in previous research had already proven with horses that I talked about that things like that are possible, that there is a great potential in this field to change nature and testing the limits of such a procedure is perfectly in line with the climate in the world at that time, especially in the Soviet Union in the re revolutionary times they were going through. So those are three speculations and that's also the main body of the article. It was quite an interesting read, but I must say I prefer people like Gregor Mendel that just look at peace to see what genetics are all about and how we can procreate effectively. I do like me some peace more than I like me some health ape health man people. Thanks a lot for watching or listening, you sick fuck, and uh, bye bye.